Because of no winter rains, we're cut off on water. So we don't know when we'll see water in here again. My name is Nancy Kaywood and I'm from Casa Grande, Arizona. We're a fifth generation cotton farm. My family has been farming in this area for 91 years and we've had drought cycles, but this is the first time we've ever seen a mega drought where it's year after year. This is our alfalfa field. The last time it received water was right around the first part of April, five weeks ago. I know other farmers that have given up farming because of the drought issues. The land right across the street has been sold and it will turn into solar energy. The land right here has been sold by those farmers and it was uh, turned into solar energy. You can hear this crunching. It's just starting to dry up. They stuck it out as long as they could and you know, eventually the money runs out. You, you can't pay the water and the taxes anymore, so it's not your best interest to try to keep the land. Your best interest is to probably go ahead and sell. And it's heart-wrenching to think that, but it's true. We're dealing with something that is different than drought. Drought implies that the next big rain is gonna solve our issues, and that's not what we're dealing with. I'm Kevin Moran. I work with Environmental Defense Fund in our ecosystems water program in the western United States. Lake Mead is the largest reservoir in the country and it stores Colorado River water for three states and two states in Mexico. Because of reduced supplies and climate change, Lake Mead is at the lowest level since it was first filled in 1930s. It means that next year, the farmers in this area will see two thirds of their surface water go away. Climate scientists are using the term aridification, which means we're dealing with a drier future. It's gonna be this way for a long time, and it requires us to adapt and come up with new solutions. Crop switching, looking at lower water use crops like Waiuli, is one of the solutions we need to be looking at. The ability to use half the water that alfalfa uses and still potentially have a viable farm and agricultural economy. holding a Waiuli plant, um, typical shrub. It's native from Mexico. We're here at the Waiuli Research Farm of Bridgestone Americas, which is outside of Phoenix. The rubber is all contained in the bark area, so all the way from the stems to the roots, there's rubber in it. If I break off a piece of the plant and pull back the bark, some of the resin is rubbed off to my finger. And when combined with other materials, the rubber from this 10-acre field would produce over 500 tires. Our research farm is set up so that we can implement different ways of irrigating that would mimic the way other growers across the state might do it and just be able to do good science. We're in a stress irrigation experiment, and right here on my left, we're looking at a full irrigation treatment. The plant height in this field are about 35 inches tall. They've received six irrigations in one year after establishment. And then the next plot here is a stress irrigation. After establishment, this plot has only received one irrigation. Plants are about 25 inches tall. We see the potential in this crop, so we're looking to have this domestic source of it, something that we could produce here in the Americas, and when it's right, we'll expand. Most of our rubber now comes from the Far East, and it all comes from one particular type of plant, and if that gets diseased, and as we deal with climate change, it's always good to diversify your crops. So the University of Arizona is working with Bridgestone to get us to a whole new bioeconomy in Southern Arizona. Which would be Waiuli plants that then are converted into tires. We call this Project Ike. Dwight David Eisenhower, then a colonel in the United States Army, was part of developing the plan to grow Waiuli. Now why did they do that? They realized that the supply of rubber in Southeast Asia was at risk if war with Japan came. And so the Army produced Waiuli at, at a massive scale, and it produced the tires in the tanks and trucks and airplanes that won World War II. 
that crisis was about supply chain in a war that was cut off. Today, the crisis is climate change and sustainable agriculture in a water-stressed region. How we decide crops out here is three parts. I mean, can we make money? Do we have the land for it? And uh, do we have the water for it? Uh, my name is Will Thielander. I'm a uh, third generation Arizona farmer. So here's the Waiuli crop on the left. And it's interesting because you'll see some plants flowering, some not. So they kind of develop at a different stage a little bit. My dad was uh, nice enough to uh, let me join the family business about 13 years ago. The kind of water we're doing right now when we're flooding, we have to do that about every two weeks for the corn and the cotton. The Waiuli, that's about once a month. Current state of the water issues and the growth of Arizona without things like Waiuli that will use less water, the prospects of future generations being able to do this is uh, not great in Arizona to be completely honest with you. So uh, here's the Waiuli field and uh, this crop hasn't been watered for about two weeks but it's it's super happy and won't need water for another two weeks. Yeah, with this crop using half as much water as the corn, our water will last twice as long here. So that's why the crop is so promising and we really hope it takes off. The conversion to a new crop is not easy, but it's a new day and a drier future looms. So right now we're in our research lab at the process center and all our final products we test in here before we ship them out. And so part of what we're doing with partners is educating farmers, talking about the science of Waiuli production. You need to understand how to plant it and how to cultivate it and how to harvest it. And there needs to be the infrastructure around it to process the crop and send it off to markets where there's demand. And the other part of it is that government policy can provide the right incentives to allow for the conversion to low water use crops. And that's part of what we're working on at EDF. Crop switching is one of the proven strategies for planning for a drier future and ensuring sustainable agriculture. And as we're looking at Waiuli and understanding its properties and its potential, we think it's part of the solution to a drier future.